All right, welcome back to the CD929 Virtual Big Room. Today we are joined by the one and only Dan Reynolds of Imagine Dragons. Thanks so much for coming on, Dan. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Just, uh, just a couple of days ago, we hit the ninth anniversary, I believe, of your performance here on this stage when it looked massively different. So we're uh, happy to have you back uh, in this way. Nine years in some regards, but also it seems like a lifetime ago. So yeah, that's that's safe to say. Uh, so I know our time is short today. I'll cut to the chase. You got two new singles out with Imagine Dragons, uh, "Follow You" and "Cutthroat" as well. Uh, two singles off of a forthcoming record, and is that record complete? Is it done? Ready? Yeah, the record is 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 all finished. Uh, we did it with uh, Rick Rubin, was the executive producer, also produced uh, the majority of the tracks, and he uh, we did it with him at Shangri La in Malibu, and the record is all done and being mixed as we speak. And uh, so it's pretty exciting times. We're uh, I'm very excited to get it out there. It'll be out there soon. I can't tell you the date yet. Uh, the band would kill me, but uh, sooner rather than later. Of course. Yeah. You mentioned Rick Rubin working with him. Uh, that's uh, super cool. And uh, I think it shines through on the production of these two singles so far. Um, how did you uh, link up with him? That's that's awesome. You know, we uh, it was our fifth record and we just thought that we wanted to try to do something different, different, push ourselves into a different place. And uh, so we threw around a lot of different names of producers. And Rick was one that we all kind of agreed would be a very interesting match. He's done a lot of, you know, our primary influences are um for for me at least i could say is a lot of 90s grunge uh and then singer songwriters like um paul simon cat stevens but also a, a ton of hip-hop i grew up listening to a bunch of tupac and biggie and outcast and and kanye and and uh so rick just kind of seemed like someone who understood rock but also understood hip-hop and understood pop and uh we we kind of float around in that and within all those different places so he was he was amazing, man. He was everything that I could have hoped uh, that he would be. A very fascinating human being, but also um, really a creative genius. Extremely wise, very eloquent, very hands-on. Yeah, that, that's cool to hear. And uh, you mentioned kind of uh, bouncing all over the place with influences. I do uh, find it super interesting, the sonic differences between these two singles so far. Um, Follow You, kind of this bouncy, uh, upbeat sort of thing, and then Cutthroat getting a bit more experimental. Uh, you've mentioned before that this is uh, kind of to preview uh, how the record is going to be a little two-sided in its uh, uh, sounds. Um, are you able to expand on that at all, what we can expect? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, if it was the days of cassette tapes, it's exactly what you're saying. It'd be kind of side A, side B. Um, and I grew up, you know, sitting with my, it makes me sound really dated, I guess, but sitting with my tape uh, player next to the radio and I would just hit record on songs that I loved and kind of make these double sides. So it was kind of an, uh, a comforting thing for me to think about that. And, um, but the record is, uh, you know, just like you said, half of it's about looking outward. Uh, half of it is about looking inward. Uh, looking out is m m much more put together. The Sonic's value of it is very more, um, um, it's just stable is the way I'd explain it. You know, like when you listen to Follow You, it's all, it was supposed to be like a bow on a box and a pack, like it's supposed to be something put together that basically was me trying to write a love song to my wife who could, we went through, uh, you know, that you can all find the story online, but we went through separation, got back together. And right after I got back together, we wrote this song. Um, and, on the far other end is cutthroat, which is about looking inward, which, you know, the mind of, of any creator or any human is typically a pretty chaotic place. I don't think it's that put together. You know, it's a, especially, you know, I've dealt with depression, anxiety, bipolarism since I was very young. So my brain is, you know, high highs, low lows, and not a lot of the middle. Um, and so, you know, cutthroat kind of exemplifies that. And that side of the record does as well. It's very, um, it's a little more organic, a little more creative, um, a little more chaotic. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, for better or for worse. That's how we how we did the record. And thematically, it made sense for us. And then it kind of comes together at the end without giving away too much. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we're so excited to get it and uh, to dive into some of these uh, themes. You mentioned the um, your separation with your wife. I also read that this uh, things kind of started to come back uh, and become a bit more centered. I know we only have a couple of moments. We probably can't dive into the deep details of uh, the ayahuasca experience that kind of brought it together. But can you uh, tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, it's it's so hard to not sound trite. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I've always hated the notion of like rock stars and like drugs and all that. It's really not uh, a drug. And it, uh, there are a lot of studies that show, especially with people who have mental disorders like myself, uh, struggle with mental things, that ayahuasca has actually been incredibly healing. There's not a lot of, um, 
you know, there's not a, a enough studies on it, I believe. And, and we're kind of, you know, I can tell you as someone who grew up with therapy, I was had a lot of drugs thrown at me and things thrown at me to kind of heal my mind. So I did a lot of just real study, took it very seriously, found a, a, a shaman who was not from the US, who's practiced it within his family for years and years. And it changed my life. It, I, I cannot explain to you, obviously, like you said, it'd be like hours of me and you sitting down and which, you know, it, it, it was the best thing that happened to me. I, I would not say, you know, it's for everybody. I wouldn't say it's definitely not some recreational thing that I would just throw around. But for anybody who's struggling with, who has struggled with lifelong depression, things like that, I think there was one study actually done on um, uh, veterans who were, who were struggling with PTSD that it did incredible things for them. So it changed my life. Absolutely. I would mark it down as one of the most important experiences of my life, but it was also incredibly scary, difficult, hard, a lot of other things involved with it. Um, so I just, yeah, I just, uh, I hate to even speak of it lightly in any way because it was the most important and valued spiritual experience of my entire life. Yeah. Wow. I was just going to mention how uh, it does seem kind of scary going in. Were you nervous at all? Oh yeah. 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 For sure. I, I <laughs> I was extremely nervous, but like, you know, I did a lot of studying before and I, you do, I did a cleansing diet for quite a, a ways uh, leading up to it. So I had taken it very seriously and kind of knew what I was getting into to a degree. Uh, and then it was about a four hour experience. And it was, uh, you know, I just, I've dealt with a lot of uh, like spiritual crisis since I was young, I was raised in a really religious family and I'm, I'm, I'm not very religious person and I wasn't very religious growing up. So it was really hard for me to kind of work that out because I also am a very loyal person to my family and and uh, and to just people in general so you know it um it just resolved a lot of those issues for me it helped me see the world in a much more grand way where things that were uh, problematic hey bud <laughs> hi there <laughs> things that were a little more like big for me and problematic I, you just you just see it kind of different and you realize uh, there's a lot more going on yeah yeah, yeah. Well, we're uh, uh, grateful to hear that. Um, and it does seem like uh, you're in a good place right here. That's amazing. Well, from something that we uh, uh, can't really speak so lightly about into uh, completely changing the subject here and something that we can speak a little bit more lightly about is the uh, the new music video for Follow You, I have to ask here. Um, it's so uh, bizarre and interesting featuring Rob McElhaney and uh, Caitlin Olson. I got to ask, uh, did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? How did that video come together? I really don't consume a ton of, of TV, but I, I love Always Sunny. It's one of the only shows that the whole band agrees on that we all love. And so my wife actually came up with the music video ideas. The basic, basic idea was a husband and wife going to a dragon show and the wife is a big fan. The husband is not a big fan. And what does that look like? What does that feel like? So we, when we talked about, it, we were like, Oh, this seems so funny. Who would be a dream couple? That's like a real couple in real life. And the fir literally the first people we thought of were so we reached out just shooting for the moon and they were like yeah we we love your music we listen to it with our kids all the time we would love to come out and it just kind of worked out and uh it was they are so funny so creative i mean just geniuses and we had such a fun time shooting that yeah they played their roles so well and uh, did some great impersonations as well uh, if anybody watching or listening hasn't seen it yet go check it out the new music video for follow you uh with just a couple of minutes remaining here i want to uh, run some fan questions by you i always like to ask for listener and fan questions and this time around we got a lot uh so just want to hit this uh this top question here with 81 votes and it uh, kind of dives into the lyrics of the single cutthroat the song goes since i was young my ancestry was marching martyrdom across the rada dada dumbla plains of utah uh, much of it can be explained by the rest of the song's lyrics, but uh, people want to know where the um, where the Rada Dada uh, motif kind of came from. Yes, yeah, so um, my ancestors were Mormons many generations back, um, and actually were uh, pilgrims. So they, uh, you know, were with the Mormons who marched across the U.S. and ended up settling in Utah, and are pioneers. And so, you know, it's. Uh, it also is, a, anybody who knows a lot about Mormonism knows that it's a very kind of, um, militant is not the word, but it's very, um, there's a lot of rules. I went on a Mormon mission, I did the whole thing, and it was a very rule-filled life, which works for a lot of people, and I have a lot of love for those roots. Um, so I'm kind of paying uh, respect to that while also just talking a little bit about the drums of that makes me think of, um, 
pioneers marching and living a very strict life. And uh, so, yeah, I was just kind of alluding at uh, my roots and how it has affected me and played a big role in my life for better and, and for worse in, in some ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sonically, again, it fits the song. Great. Uh, pivoting again to a much less uh, heavy question. Uh, another fan question here. What color is your toothbrush? Ha. Uh, my toothbrush is orange. Yeah. <laughs> Orange. You heard it here first, the more you know. Um, one last uh, question here. It's a question that I like to shoehorn into every interview. I'm working on a map here. I like to see how you think um, in terms of shapes. What is the prettiest American state in terms of its geographical outline alone? If you're you know, just going by shapes. I, I'm, I'm going to be totally like... Uh, I mean, I'm just going to say Nevada because I, I mean, I grew up loving the shape of Nevada because it's like, it's not a square, it's not a triangle, but it's like you marry a square and a triangle together. And uh, I, I would have, when I was younger, I would have said Florida. Um, but as I've grown up, I don't have as many great memories for Florida. <laughs> uh, just because the shape is interesting. I think Texas has a good shape to it as well. Uh, I'm gonna, so I'm going to go, yeah, and it's almost similar to Nevada in some ways. It's kind of like this big square with like a point at the bottom. Point at the bottom. But anyway, so I'll go to Nevada uh, with Texas in second place. I really like Nevada. That's super high on my list. Open Mike Eagle called it, quote, an ill trapezoid. <laughs> I, like, I like the way you think there, and we'll send you off on that one. What was number one on your list? Uh, Louisiana, because it's shaped like an L, and you don't find that very often. Oh, it's interesting. I've never thought about that. Well, we'll send you off on that one. Thanks so much, Dan, for, uh, for swinging by the virtual big room here at CD92.9. Thanks for having me. Thanks for all the support, guys. Of course. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>